guys, what is up? I am Jen from Jen Whitmore Training and today we are talking about sugar, the poison that we all love to love. Oh, we love it. Oh, how we love it. It's in everything we eat and we love it because we are addicted to it. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so is sugar a poison? After we talk today, I'll let you decide. Okay, so first of all, what is a poison? Obviously, it's something that kills you, right? Whether it kills you fast or kills you slow, bottom line is poison kills you. Okay, so first we are going to talk about how sugar has been increasing over the years and how it's affecting us. Okay, first of all, the daily level of fructose intake has doubled in the last 30 years. Obviously, that's a bad sign, right? Okay. So according to the American Heart Association, Americans consume 100 pounds of sugar per year. And now if we break that down, that is basically 30 teaspoons a day. Now the American Heart Association, Association is also recommending that women only have six teaspoons a day. So six recommended. 30 we're actually intaking. Yeah, those are bad numbers. Okay, so we need to pay a little bit closer attention. And why? Why do we need to pay closer attention? Because obviously it's causing us problems. It's causing us heart disease and diabetes. And so where does most of the sugar come from that we consume? Wah, wah. It comes from all the sugary drinks that we have fruit juice and soda. Now you already know my stance on soda. I am not a fan, as I said in a previous video. Moving on. So last year there was actually a proposed ban um, on the sale of sweetened soda, but New York's highest court rejected it. Hmm, wonder why that is. Okay, we're not gonna get into politics and all that stuff, but we know sugar is bad for us, but for some reason, they keep feeding it to us, and it's A-OK. -okay. okay, so moving on. There was a study done from the University of Texas on rats and how sugar affected them. So they did this um, controlled study, and they fed a specific uh, amount of rats a starch based diet and then a specific amount of rats a sucrose based diet. Now out of both of them all of the, well not all of the rats, but both controlled studies developed breast cancer in rats. The problem is is that 30 percent of the starch fed rats developed breast cancer 50 and 58 percent of the rats fed the sucrose diet developed breast cancer. That's 50%, 50% developed breast cancer after being fed a sucrose diet at the six month mark, six months. That's, those are not good numbers. Now granted, those are rats, but what does the study say? Okay, so what are we supposed to do about it? We're gonna start checking labels. Okay, we're going to start opting for natural sugar and not just the added sugar. Hashtag no added sugar. And then we're going to reduce the amount of drinks, sugary drinks that we consume. Those are just a couple of ways to get started. Okay, so is sugar a poison? Well, let's review. Number Sorry, I lost you. Not right now, please. I'm, I'm on the computer. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so number one. Your brain cannot recognize all the sugar that you're consuming. It's not telling you to stop eating it. Number two, you are now consuming more, and so therefore your insulin is higher. Number three, so in turn, because your insulin is higher, it is blocking your leptin. Now, what is leptin? Leptin is actually a hormone. Let's go back. Leptin is a hormone that regulates your body fat. So the higher that your insulin level is and continually raised, then it's stopping your, um, sorry, I'm having a brain fart. It's having your, it's, dang it, popular today. It keeps cutting off my video. No, you can't have that. 
Now go away. I'm on the live. Go camera, away. Is my time up? No, it's not. How many more minutes? It is literally impossible to do anything with Literally impossible to do anything. The phone's ringing. The children want your attention. Okay, moving on. So, now that your leptin is being blocked, it is causing you weight gain because that's the hormone that regulates your uh, body fat. And then your blood pressure is getting high. You've got high cholesterol, which leads to stroke. We're talking about heart disease, people, and diabetes. Did you know that one in three Americans' death is caused by heart disease? Heart disease is caused by all the junk that we do to our bodies and goes basically all the way down to eating sugar. Okay, so now I realize there are other things that cause that, but for the sake of this conversation, we're talking about sugar here, and sugar is what's happening. It's causing all of these problems, and it leads to all of these other problems that cause bigger problems. Okay, so now that we talked about the sciencey side, let's talk about the real life side, okay? There isn't one of us that doesn't know that vegetables are good for us, but it doesn't make us want to eat them anymore. You know, I'm like, personally, I'm a veggie lover, but if you're not a veggie lover, you know they're good for you, but it doesn't make you want to eat them anymore. So, what are we supposed to do? Well, because sugar is addictive as much as drugs, we have to set boundaries to be able to cut it out. And of course, your level of commitment here is going to be one thing as far as what you're actually trying to achieve, but boundaries and rehab. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, real rehab. I'm talking about setting boundaries and rehab of quitting sugar, okay? So now that you, well, let me start over there. Rehab and boundaries. Now, you would think that the rehab is going to be the hard part. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy. It probably will be difficult, at least for two weeks. Sometimes people are super addicted, maybe a little bit more. The first two weeks would probably kind of suck when you quit sugar. I know, because they do, and I get it. Um, but the boundaries part is what's going to be the hard part, because after you've overcome, you now are in the danger zone where you have to make sure that you don't start regressing because it's easy and it's everywhere. You know, especially right now around the holidays. We've got Thanksgiving coming up. We've oh my gosh! <laughs> Moving on. So we just passed Halloween. Thanksgiving is coming up. And then, of course, there's Christmas. And there's Christmas parties and Christmas parades. And all of that comes with an onslaught of food and alcohol, which mostly consists of sugar, especially the mixed drinks, regardless of just the liquor in itself. All right. So, we have to make sure that we aren't regressing. But, before we worry about not regressing, we have to start. So, tips earlier on how to start. And, I also have a how to cut, start cutting out your sugar in five days. And if you um, click the link, then once you click the link, it will take you over and you can get that freebie on how to start cutting out sugar today. Okay? today. You can start lowering, lowering your sugar intake. All right, so now that I've given you all the info, we are going to talk about three people real quick who have had success when quitting sugar, cutting it out, and um, how they're doing with it, okay? All right, so one I'll just go ahead and give you is me. Um, when I quit sugar, the first two weeks I was super moody, and I didn't even realize it. My husband kept asking me, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? And I'm like, nothing's wrong with me. I'm fine. And he's like, not really. So it was like this underlying moody that I didn't really notice or understand. It was just kind of like everyone was getting on my nerves. I didn't understand what was going on. So now on the other side, I realize underlying moody because I had quit sugar. Okay. My face cleared up. I have struggled with acne since the seventh grade, and we're gonna talk about that in another video about acne and causes, but my skin cleared up when I cut out sugar. Who knew? And I lost weight. In the first week, I lost weight. In the second week, I lost weight. And I cheated a little bit. Okay, not to mention, everything starts to taste better. Salt, holy moly, salt tastes so good. And then you have to make sure that you don't have too much because it's too much. Um, also, what else? Let's see. Oh, 
my teeth hurt. I still have my wisdom teeth. And when I cut out sugar, my teeth really started to hurt. They bothered me for a good couple of days. And then it went away. But still, it was just a weird side effect. But now that I'm on the other side of it, I have way less cravings. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that my life is perfect and I never eat any sugar because that's not true. But because I went through this and I'm still going through this, this is a lifestyle change for me. I don't crave it as much and I don't want it. And I actually mourn it a little bit. Okay, next girl. So Jamie said that her joints and her, like her hips and stuff where she would exercise would ache. And when she quit sugar, that didn't happen anymore because cutting out sugar actually reduces inflammation. Yay! Okay, next girl. Sarah said that she got the shakes and um, 2 p.m. was when she was like crashed out on the couch. But after those two weeks were over, then she didn't have those problems anymore. And she said that she felt like she had kid energy. You know how we always see little kids and we're like, oh, I wish I could bottle up that energy. Well, guess what? You can. You can stop eating sugar and then you won't have to bottle up little kid energy because you'll have your own. Yay! All right, so there are plenty of other positive and negative side effects that turn into positive side effects from quitting sugar, but we will talk about those in another video. So thanks for listening, guys. I'm so sorry about all of the distractions, but as is life being a mom, I will see you guys on Friday. We will be talking about then how sugar actually makes us fat and keeps us fat. See you later.